are back at Flipside Gaming. The Citadel Battle Tray has been set up in a different manner, slightly different terrain, but we're still using terrain rules. We are playing a matched play battle plan called Escalation. There are three objectives on the board. The idea is to have more of your models near those objectives than the enemy has models. Uh, the tricky bit about this scenario is that your army is coming in and, wa and waves. Each of us has 11 units, so we're getting four units the first turn, four units the second turn, and the remaining units the last turn. 2,000 points of dwarves. I've got 20 thunderers here with shields. I've got 20 longbeards with shields. I've got 20 longbeards with shields and great weapons. I've got 30 warriors. I've got a gyro bomber. I've got a dwarf lord um, and a slayer. I usually run them with the rules from the dwarf uh, army. Um, this thing. Just because he has a great weapon and I like the great weapon rules. Uh, I've got a dwarf engineer and an organ gun, a grudge thrower, and a cannon. And I am taking the artillery battalion. So that's a 60 point battalion that basically gives me uh, cover and then reroll saves against shooting attacks. And I don't flee. Thank you. Check me on that. Don't trust what I say. Yeah, and that's my army. Oh, I'm we're playing Escalation, which is always yeah. tricky, especially when you don't move fast. So I'm kind of hoping to camp a little bit, and then kind of pull it out at the end with the gyro bomber. We'll see how that works. Though. I am bringing 2,000 points of Iron Jaws. Uh, you'll see there is no cabbage in this game. This is matched play. The cabbage has no place there. It's all about bodies on the field, and that's what you're seeing right now. There are 20 brutes, there are 40 ard boys, and then there are four different heroes. Five different heroes. Four. So this looks like a mega boss, but I'm actually using him as Grimgore Ironhide to benefit my ard boys more. And I have three war chanters and the Weird Knob Shaman, just because casting Mystic Shield every now and then might help out. My goal this game is just to camp the art boys on the objectives and hope it works. I'm just gonna choose that side of the board. I've got this side of the board. Now we're gonna roll to see who starts deploying. I get a five. Taylor gets a five, roll again. I get a two. Taylor gets a two. <laughs> Roll again. It's gonna be the whole video. <laughs> I get a two. Taylor yeah. gets a two. <laughs> Six. Uh, four. That was a high order. All right. Um, I will choose to deploy first. We've finished deploying. I have my four units. Taylor has his four units. Um, the way I deployed was my. I assumed that the biggest fighting was going to be in the center, so I deployed my big block of twenty art boys there and then 10 hard boys on the other objectives. Taylor countered by putting heavier deployment on this objective uh, because terrain is going to be difficult here. He can't, his, his unit aren't gonna be able to scale that wall and he has to deploy behind that wall. So he's hoping to get these two objectives to win the game. Yeah, dwarves have tiny arms and legs. They don't climb well. So, so what I did is I deployed my giant unit of brutes with reach weapons. Uh, over here so that they can help contest this far objective. So with deployment done, I finished first, so I get to choose who goes first, and I'm going to stick with the strategy of making my opponent go first for the hope in the double turn. So, your turn. Alright. That works for me because I got to set up my shield walls and stuff and not get completely charge turn one and die. <laughs> like that one game we played. Starting my hero phase. Um, no one's within 16 for me to declare my ancestral grudge on yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the warriors um, essentially fearless with the inspiring presence rule. And the longbeards are going to start grumbling and they're going to grumble about how weedy the orcs are these days. And I'm going to get to reroll one 
on everything within 80 inch inches to boom. And that's the hero case. So now everyone will shuffle forward 4 inches. It might not look like I've moved, but I have. I've gone forward 4 inches. So just pretty much straightforward with everything. And that is turn 1. We'll wait and see what, what the orcs do. There are no heroes on the board, so I can't get the Ravager's Destruction move, and I can't use the Battle Brew or the, or rather the Rampaging Destroyer to move that extra two inches either. All I have is my Iron Fist Battalion to give me D6 inches, so that's what I'm going to do now. Iron Fist move done. Everybody is snuck about four or five inches closer, uh, and I'm going to roll for all three of these units for being in the mystical terrain. So hopefully they're not befuddled. So the brutes gets three, they're fine. Those brutes are fine. And the iron boss are fine. So all three of these units will now be re-rolling wounds for this combat phase. And that is the end of the hero phase. Now we go into movement phase. choice is whether or not to charge the dwarves or get the objective. I think it honestly behooves me, because the objectives I need to be within six inches of, I think I can do that and charge them, especially if I get the double turn, so that's what I'm going to go for. Um, so with that in mind, I think I'm going to actually, I'm going to run them this turn and hope for the double turn to charge them. Movement phase ended for the Iron Jaws. I ran every unit because they're just still too far away to charge. Uh, so this gets me in a good position to charge next turn. They're dwarfs, they don't like charging, so I'm not too worried about the counter charge. Uh, and I'm now in position to start scoring next turn with all the objectives. So there is no shooting here, and nobody died, so there's no battle shock. No charging, that's the end of turn one. Let's roll for initiative to see who goes first on turn two. Taylor rolled a three, and I rolled a two. Ooh, Taylor's going first. Planning on where to put my units, I'm probably gonna end up putting my artillery people up on the top of that hill to kind of uh, help out a dwarf assault there to secure the objective. And I was thinking ahead to next turn and how to deal with those guys over there and I have half a mind to take my gunsmen, put them behind this hill, jump up, and then shoot down like proper castle tactics. We'll see if I do that. We'll see how the rest of the fight goes. Because I'm... Honestly, I'm pretty well okay just having Black Orc sit there and do nothing for the rest of the game. That wouldn't be the end of the world for me. I, I'm not a mobile army. I don't deal well with moving across the table, so I try not to. You, you know, play to your strengths. In my artillery um, battalion here, that's four units that came on. They are just outside of 12 inches of his unit, which is good. Um, it's the hero phase now, so I'm going to declare a grudge, the ancestral grudge on his um, brutes, which will give me plus one to wound them um, until my next hero phase. And these guys are continuing their same old grumblings about the orcs. So I'll get my reroll ones to, to move for everything with an 8 inch. My movement phase, I've um, moved my artillery here in a position so that the engineer, that guy in the middle, he's within one inch of each of my artillery pieces. So that's going to give them all their buff. That's a very important way to deploy your artillery if you're a dwarf player. And because my dwarf warrior, or uh, Lord is pretty much the only thing without a shield, and I don't have to worry about setting shield walls. I'm gonna go ahead and run him towards this objective. So I'm gonna move an additional one inch. Fantastic. That really is gonna swing the, the balance of the game. I'm going to shoot the dwarf cannons into the unit of our boys. So that's two shots, four to hit. Both of them hit. And that's going to be twos to wound, both of which wound, and it's going to be d6 wounds. So 
So five, I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll the two. I have um, explosive rounds, which lets me re-roll against infantry units of 10 or more. I got a three. So eight wounds in total, friend two. Six plus, only two plus. Six, sorry. Yeah, it's right, yeah. Uh, and I fail both of them, so that's eight. Four models go ahead and open up with the organ gun. Uh, the organ gun's kind of an interesting artillery piece. I choose how many barrels I'm going to fire, and then I have to roll under or at that number. So I'm going to go ahead and try to fire all four. I get a reroll to this because of the engineer. So I rolled a three. I think I'm okay. I'm going to check those rules. I have to go over, over or equal to, so I have to re-roll that. And I roll a six, so I'm okay. So now I'm shooting D6, or four D6 shots. Pretty good roll. I got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 shots. And those are going to be threes to hit and threes to wound. <laughs> Eight saves at minus one run. Five up. Five more wounds on the Ard Boys. At the Brutes. These are going to be threes to hit, threes to wound. I selected them as my unit that I have a grudge on. I don't believe I did that on camera, but I discussed it with um, my opponent when I deployed it. So I'm going to go ahead and roll for that. Two fives, so those are hits. And a six. And a two, so I only get one wound. And these are three wounds apiece, and they are end two. Saved. Here is going to shoot at the Ard Boys. See if I can pick off that one more model for uh, morale reasons. Three to hit, three to wound, rend one. I get a five to hit. And that's three, that's a wound. So that's a uh, save. Any rend? Uh, rend one. Saving on a five. Does not save. All right, and that is dwarf shooting phase. I'm gonna contemplate not charging. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna charge. It's not worth losing my rerolls. It doesn't really get me anything. So I think that's going to be my turn. The unit of 10 Ard Boys lost seven guys, so I have to do a battle shock test. Their bravery is going to be a eight. Uh, I rolled a six, plus seven minus eight, that's five. So this entire unit has been wiped out. Another grudge settled. Another wrong put break. A little bit of a wrap up. I um, measured over here. I've got like two, three, four dwarves within six inches of this objective. And because I blew this unit to smithereens, I actually secured that one. So that's going to be one point for me this turn. Uh, they are far too close on this objective, however, so I don't have that one. But one turn, one point, I'm not. You know, that's good for the dwarves. We don't get to objectives often, so I'm doing good. I'm, I'm feeling good about this so far. Iron Jaws turn two. I started by deploying my next four units on the edge of the board and both the units of remaining brutes. I have Grimgore himself and I have my shaman. My hope is that these brutes are going to be enough to, I don't know, do something over here. These brutes over here are hoping to reinforce the art boys and I took Grimgore on the board so that more people are getting plus one to hit and the war chant, or the, the shaman rather, is going to be giving out mystic shield. So let me first start by rolling for mystical terrain. I have one unit of brutes within the terrain. They roll a one. These brutes aren't doing anything this turn. That's fantastic. Uh, the shaman himself rolls a two. So the shaman is re-rolling wounds. That's not going to help anybody. Grimcore is going to use his command ability. That gives everybody within 10 inches in the next two combat phases a plus one to hit. And I'm going to put 
mystic shield on these brutes here. And then let me start with rampaging destroyers. My general is on the board. I took the Ravager's command trait for him, which gives all the destruction army plus two to their rampaging destroyers. And the Battle Brute, which gives, if I take a swig of that, each turn it will give him one to hit and one to wound. And so let me get the Rampaging Destroyers out of the way. So these Brutes are going to move 2d6 inches now because of Iron Fist and Rampaging Destroyers. So that's going to be 9 inches plus 2, 11 inches. These Brutes here are going to be moving 9 inches. The Bard Boys over there, they are not within 6 inches of a hero, so they do not get Rampaging Destroyers, but they do get the Iron Fist Battalion move. The Bard Boys over there, I don't need to worry about this turn. These Brutes are going to fuck. The Rengor himself gets Rampaging Destroyers, so he moves three inches, the shaman gets to move seven inches. So the Iron Jaws, the Brutes have moved up to take care of things. I'm hoping to put these Brutes into some artillery and these Brutes into this unit to provide support for these Brutes. And Grimgor, I think it's going to be a Hail Mary, but if he can make an eight inch charge that would be amazing. And over here, I just kind of wrap them around because moving 20 yard boys one inch is an exercise in futility. I'm going to use this dam. What dam terrain does is I, I take D3 mortal wounds. So I take three more wounds. That's one guy dead. One guy has one hit points. And then that means I get one to hit for this turn, which will help me greatly. All right, movement phase is complete for the Iron Jaws. I basically scooted people closer so that a, because a three inch charge is a lot harder to fail. Although it does happen. Uh, and then let's just go right into the charges because there's nothing else to do. So this unit of Brutes is going to be, that's an eight inch charge. They're spoiled for choice. Grindor himself. I need a very large charge. Eight inch charge. Yeah, that might do it. We'll see. These brutes over here. I'll take that five. <laughs> and another five. So that's a ten inch charge for those brutes, which is very good. And finally, the art boys. inches plus two from their drummers so 11 inches <laughs> the brutes got a 10 inch charge uh, and that allows me to put them behind this unit of thunderers uh longbeards longbeards what that does is if they pile in towards my brutes, it forces them to go away from this other brute squad. So I think that's going to turn out in my favor quite nicely. And these all are equipped with the jagged gore hackers and the gore choppers, so they all have reach. Except for this. A couple things happened in my charge phase. These brutes are going to take care of some cannons. It was brought up that you can't move necessarily through models, but there's enough gaps in here that theoretically the brutes can squeeze themselves through, or I could just go ten in, or five inches and five inches to complete the charge that way. Grimgor was not able to make his charge. Eight inches does not bring him to within half an inch of another model. And one of the things that happens because of that is these brutes are now outside his 10 inch hit bubble. So they will not be getting his plus one to hit. And then over on the center objective, the art boys were able to wrap themselves completely around the general and the other dwarves there. So let's get started with hitting things. I believe I am going to start with 
this unit of brutes here because I believe that these guys are going to do the most damage to the units they're fighting. <laughs> yeah, they will. They have no bonuses. Let's start with the brute boss. Four to hit with his claw. That's a hit. And three to wound. That's a wound with a minus one rend on the long beards. All right. So I have usually a four up, a five up. I saved it. Okay. The boss smasher hits automatically because the claw hit. So wounding on a three. That's two more wounds with a minus two rend. Minus two. Okay. So these are sixes now. All right, I save one, I get a reroll. Uh, if you're a dwarf and you have a shield and you don't run a charge, you get rerolls on all your armor saves, which is why you rarely see me run or charge. Uh, close, but no cigar. So that's doing D3 damage. That is three damage on the dwarfs. Let's do the two gore choppers at the moment. Three attacks each hitting on a four. That's a four. None of them hit. Bad luck there. Let's do the jagged gore choppers then. So that's going to be seven models with three attacks each. That's 21 dice. Hitting on a three. Wounding on a three. Okay, so that's going to be 10 wounds with a minus one rend. Alright, I'll go ahead and roll these. Let's see? Not as good as it could be. Oh, not bad. So I take six more. My turn to choose. I'll go ahead and pick the dwarf warriors to try to mitigate some damage over there. They're uh, definitely not slouches in close combat, especially when it's not their turn. So I'll go ahead and do my pylons over here, and then we'll resolve these attacks. So I've got 30 dwarf warrior attacks coming in. In total, I get plus one for my unit champion. Rolling into the box because we've got so many dice. So we're looking for threes to hit. And then I'm going to be wounding on fours. Uh, the dwarves have a special rule called Resilient in Defense, which will allow me to reroll all failed wounds as long as I have 20 or more models in the unit. So now I'll be wounding on fours. Pull those failed wounds, which is fair field. 16, 17, 18, 19. Mark our boys saving on a four up. Seven do not save. So that is three models and a half going away. I am going to attack with the art boys back. There are 15 art boys left. One of them is the boss. They all get plus one to hit because of the damned terrain. The boss gets an additional plus one to hit for just being the boss. So let me do the boss first. He's going to be hitting on twos. And so that's two hits. So we're hitting on threes. So wounding on threes. 15 wounds on the dwarf warriors. No round. Alright, so I'll get a 5-up save. Because I didn't charge or run, I will be able to re-roll fail saves. I'll roll two more for the boss. Oh, yeah. Right. That was a fail for the boss. Roll that again. Aha! Uh -huh. Eight. Eight wounds. I'll go ahead and remove those. Keeps me above 20. That's important. Moving models furthest away from the objective. That's uh, what we here call strategery. So I've got fours to hit and five wounds on these. Uh, one hit and uh, no wounds. Surprise, surprise. Checking with the roots. You, you are going to have to specify where things are going. I've got Grudge Thor artillery guys here, I've got the Cannon artillery guys here, 
and the cannon and the grudge thrower themselves. I don't know if you're in range. Of these, are, these are the organ gun? Or the organ gun guys are on the side here. I tried to keep everyone sort of separated so it would make sense. These guys on the edge, these guys in the middle, and the artillery guy in the, in the, the center there. The engineer. These two are going to attack the grudge thrower crew. Mm -hmm. These three are going to attack the cannon, cannon crew. Okay. So just the crew. Right. Yeah, they're they're out of here, guys. It's uh, it's a little overkill, but I. It's I, it's good because it means they won't shoot. I I've, mean, I've learned over my games that spreading out your fire too far means that nothing get nothing dies. It's risky. Yep. So let me start with these two groups first. They are within ten inches of Grimgor, so they're going to get plus one to hit. So that's four attacks each, hitting on a two. Which which ones are these? These two. Okay. Not re-rolling. Wounding on a three. So that's five wounds to minus one rent. I tried. Alright, one wound each? One wound each, yep. Yeah. Okay. So the grudge throw is out of commission. The brute boss is going to attack with his boss claw. One attack hitting on a three. Wounding on a three, so that's one wound, the minus one rend on the organ gun crew. Cannon, yeah. Cannon crew. Oh, he's dead. So, uh, so that's wounds? actually, no, it's two wounds. Okay. And then, now watch, because I allocated the remaining two brutes on that, this one guy is going to take them all out. So his smasher automatically hitting because the claw hits, wounding on a three. So that's one wound and minus two rend. Yep. Doing D3 damage, but one left. Cool. So on the bright side, they don't have to take the um, uh, battle shock test because of their attachment. They never have to take them. Great. Yeah. And I'm just lamenting the fact that these two brutes are not going to be wasted. <laughs> they probably could have ripped that cannon apart, too. OK, so it's your turn to attack for somebody. All right. Well, long beard's full. Alright, so force to hit and twos to wound because those were the guys that my general put the ancestral grudge on. And because they're grumbling, I'll get a reroll one. So I'm looking at. Oh, I still fail one. I got six wounds. No rend? Rend one. Rend one. So saving on a five plus. So that's two save. Four do not. So that is one brute that's going away, and one brute has one wound on him. Alright, and I almost forgot, because he's kind of swamped in there with uh, orcs, can't really see him. My uh, Dwarf Lord has yet to attack. Now, I took the command trait um, Heroic Warrior? Legendary Fighter? Something, it gives me plus one attack, I can't remember the exact name of it, I think it's Legendary. So I'll be getting four attacks with my runic great axe. So threes to hit and threes to wound. I fail almost all of. Just start. And I fail to wound. So he's just standing there with his hand on his axe, looking, you know, menacing. That's what he's doing today. Old battle shock test for these brutes. They lost one model. I rolled a six. And because there are only nine models currently in the unit, their bravery is six. So that's one unit gone, and I will take the, unit, the wounded one. More strategic. Our boys actually lost five models this turn. Oh, because of the damn train, right? That damn so train. So I rolled a five, plus five is ten. Now they have plus one bravery because there's more than ten, so that makes them bravery eight. And the banner adds plus two to their bravery, so they're fine. Nice. All right, I'll do mine. The dwarves lost. What did we lose here? Eight. Eight. We're bravery six. So we're losing some. You're regardless. I rolled a six. Now I will use my cheesy. Um, I kind of think underpowered. It is underpowered, but yeah, yeah within, 12 inch, well, within 12 inches. Yep, and I got the general right there, so we'll re-roll that. And we'll roll another six. So, what is that, eight? 
So I took a clan banner. Um, everybody takes a clan banner. It's the only banner to take. It's what the kids are using these days. It halves the amount of people running away, so I lose four. Which takes me under 20, which is a big deal. For the long beards over here, roll four. How many did I lose? Nine, so that's six running away, three in total. I'll keep that roll. Three. Again, they have the clan banner, so half of six, run away. Your job is turn two. I accomplished some things and failed some other things. There's big tactical mistakes on my part here. Uh, I moved the brutes out of range of the buff from here, which was bad, and I almost moved them out of range of the objective. But luckily, I still have two, two brutes in range of this objective. So that gives me one point. Another tactical mistake in the center. I overextended myself with the art boys piling in. Uh, I guess orcs are just anxious to get stuck in. I moved more models outside of the objective than he has inside it. So I do not get this point. But I still have the objective on the other side of the table. So that's two points scored for me. The score is now two to one, Iron Jaws. Let's roll. Yeah. Okay, Taylor rolled a six, and I rolled a one. So oh, Taylor's going first again. Here comes the Air Corps, <laughs> the Air Force, oh. and the crazy guy without pants. I'm bring him in over here. Roll phase. I brought on my uh, Thunderers over here. We're gonna start volleying into the brutes. Hopefully, we can. Um, Turn the tide of that fight. I got my gyro bomber over here along with my uh, dwarf slayer, kind of a berserker unit. We're going to be charging down the hill and trying to um, aid our comrades there against the big block of uh, hard boys. Um, for my command ability, I'm going to go ahead and issue the, the grudge on these guys, which will make um, give me plus one to wound on that unit. Uh, these guys and these guys are still going to grumble and get their rerolls of one. And that's the hero phase, so I'll go into movement now. Movement, I moved the dwarf thunderers forward so that everyone is within 16 inches of the brutes. So we'll uh, open fire on them shortly. I moved the longbeards forward to break from dwarf tradition and charge in and uh, help their uh, kinsmen over here save the king. Uh, the slayers move forward. He's within eight inches, so he's going to do a Hail Mary charge. And the gyrocopters here just to kind of pester them, and next turn I'll probably fly over and try to like have another model within that objective to help keep that under dwarven control. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the shooting phase here. I'm gonna start with the organ gun because you can shoot things in combat. And we're just gonna open fire on those brutes. Gonna roll for four barrels. Fortune favors the bold. Not today, fortunately. It's jammed. So we'll have to play old fantasy rules where they can't shoot. The dwarf engineer will take a shot though. Freeze to hit. A hit, threes to wound, that's a wound on the brutes, one run. Okay, so saving on a five, saved. All right, and now the thunderers, so that's gonna be 20 shots. Uh, normally they're hitting on fours, wounding on threes, but when you have over 20, you get a rule precision shots. So I'll be hitting on threes and wounding on threes. Champion will be hitting on twos. So I'll roll all purple dice for him. Never actually used this unit before. I used to run quarrelers until I realized that they were mathematically inferior. So, again, like I said, that was the champion, so that is actually a hit. Twos, not many. Very good roll. And we're looking for three. Champion didn't move. We'll hold that against it. Three, Put six, it in the grudge book. nine, and eleven. You better believe it. So, saving on a five. Come on, brutes. Ooh, that was a good roll. That was a good roll. Three. Three. 
So six wounds, that's two deleted brutes. Alright, and then the gyro bomber's shatter gun going into the um, hard boys over here. So four attacks, force to hit. That's three hits. Going for threes to wound. That's two wounds at rend one. Neither of them saved. So that is one more deleted Ard boy. A charge with the. Oh, well, guess what you should have done is you should check that guy out. A charge with the uh, Slayer there. Let's see if he makes it in. Let's see if it mattered. Five, six, seven. So nope. Uh, he doesn't make it in. It's not within half an inch. Yeah, eight away. And I'm gonna go ahead and charge with the long beard unit. Uh, not very dwarfy, but they need to get in there. Four! A pretty pathetic roll, but it should be enough. I moved within three. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get these guys in here. Doesn't do what I was hoping. I was hoping I get a long, a bigger roll to get them closer to the objective. Can't always get what you want. And we can go ahead and maximize my attacks back over here with my long beard before they get more damage thrown upon them. So these are going to be fours to hit. And back to threes to wound. And I don't have the grudge on them anymore. Um, still re rolling ones. So two wounds. Neither can save. Five. I'm going to hit the general. So hitting on a three because the damn terrain is still in effect. And three is two wound. So six wounds, no rend on the jump. Alright, I fail three of them. So I've got two left. Nine are going to hit the warriors. Those 27 attacks on the warriors, the black dice is going to represent the boss. The boss is hitting on a two, the others are hitting on a three. Okay, wounding on a three. Twelve wounds on the dwarf warriors. No rend. Five ups, re-roll. I lose five. These are gonna be threes to hit. Those are hilarious, by the way. I just wanna say that. That was a good one. A very good one. Wow, incredibly good roll. Now, because of the Ancestral Grudge rule, it's going to be threes to wound. Because of the Grumblers, I'm going to be re-rolling ones. I got a lot of ones, making good use of that roll. I got five, ten wounds to save. No run. Saving on a four. That was a horrible roll. Ooh, not a single one. So five more models go away. Okay, and now I am going to attack some artillery with some brutes. Attacking the artillery, I am going to put... I'm going to put these two and the boss into the engineer. And then I'm going to put these two brutes into the remaining crew for the organ gun. So we'll do the boss first. Boss. They are within 10 inches of Grimgore, so they get plus one to hit. So the boss claw is hitting on a four. That's a miss, but the engineer has more than four wounds, so I can reroll that. That's a hit. Claw is wounding on a six. That's one wound to the minus one rend. All right, six up save. Hey! He's a hero. The Smasher automatically hits because the claw did, wounding on a three. Nothing. Lucky, lucky. All right. So the other two brutes, eight attacks, hitting on a two, wounding on a three. So that's five wounds with a minus one rend on the engineer. All right, I need one six to keep him alive. That's how, that's how oh, and there it is. He's got one wound left. And then the Gore Chopper on the crew. 
minus Ooh, three hits. Triple six. That's two wounds with a minus one rend. All right, sixes. All right. So that's two guys down. No, oh, hang on. Well, that's actually three damage total. Oh, okay. That's what you need. No. Now, as a side note, we rolled off for it. We couldn't decide uh, if, when the crew die, if you need to continue to fight the artillery pieces. Uh, again, we rolled for it as, as per the rules. Um, we rolled in his favor, so we're just gonna count them as not really being there for the purpose of the game. Uh, you can leave a comment if if you agree or disagree. We're not really sure on that rule. It's one of those vague Sigmar rules. So, the important thing is we're playing and we're having fun. That's what the game is for. Your engineer is gonna be hitting on fours, wounding on fours. So I've got two hits, and I've got one wound, no red. Save on four. Saved. Those brutes over there, they're getting no bonuses whatsoever. Boss going to hit on a four. Wounds on a three. That's one wound, minus one rend on the long beard. All right, two shots at five up. I got it. Okay. And the boss claw hitting on a, a wounding on a three. That's two wounds, the minus two rend. Looking for sixes. One. Okay. One goes through. So that's doing three damage. Whoa. The two gore choppers. Hitting on fours. Wounding on threes. Okay, so that's four wounds, the minus one rend. All right, so three rollable fives. Two more. Okay, so I need to ask deep three wounds. So that's two, three more. Jagged Gore Hackers hitting on a three. Wounding on a three. It's terrible. One wound and minus one rend. Alright, two shots at five. Nope. That's just one more. Alright. Can't even delete that unit. Uh, you will in Battle Shock though. Yeah, he's running in Battle Shock. All right, and I will pile in an attack with my Dwarf Lord next. Four attacks, threes to hit. That's three hits. Now I'm looking for twos to wound, and I'm rerolling ones. So that's three wounds. These are at rend two, and they're three damage apiece. Ouch, so need sixes. That's- It was three. All right, let me reroll that then. Need sixes. One six, so two do not save, that's six damage? That's correct. So, let's take one, two, three more models. I'm not taking I'm not taking the banner and I'm not taking the icon because I'm going to need all the help I can get with the bravery test. Alright, and then I'll pile in an attack with the long beard. Longbeard's attacking now. These guys are going to be hitting on threes, wounding on threes, uh, re-rolling ones. Threes to wound. Again, because of the grudge. Any rend? No rend. Saving on a four. One, two, three do not save. So Brutes lost two models. They have a bravery of six. So one more goes away. We'll take the wounded one. All right. My dwarf longbeards cannot pass on any roll, so they'll be fleeing. They lost seven, they're bravery seven, so even a one would make them run. The orc ard boys this turn lost eight models. Three more models flee. They're dwarf warriors. Oh yeah, they lost five. A leadership six, so I'll keep that roll. I don't want to risk it and lose more than I have to. Take out one. Looks like I've got this objective. I have no shot in hell of ever getting that objective, and that objective's pretty well out of my reach now. So it looks like this game's going to the Iron Jaws. 
and I'll stand my ground and take as many down as I can. So we'll move on, we'll keep playing. I like rolling dice, I like killing orcs, so we'll keep killing orcs. Hero phase, I brought in the band. My three war champions are now on the board. Grimgore is going to use his command ability. Uh, that'll take effect in the combat phase. My shaman is going to cast Mystic Shield on these brutes. Roll for it. I need a six. And I get it. And let me roll for the terrain on here. This war chanter is fine. The brutes. The brutes are befuddled again. That is terrible. This war chanter over here. Maybe they found some madcap mushrooms. Apparently, and the war chanter is befuddled as well. So I'm so, so, essentially so. going to lose that center objective. It's a feast over there. So let me do rampaging destroyers. Sprint phase for the iron jaws. I basically move these brutes closer to the objective. I move Grimgore closer to these. Maybe a suicide mission. And I retreated these orcs here just to provide a little bit more of a nuisance. There's no, there's not going to be any charging. Well, no, let me try and charge with Grim Gore, because you never know. Seven inch charge, I don't think. Yep, yeah, seven inch charge will do it. Yeah, that's it. That's not it. A good charge. I haven't had a chance to set my wall, so no reroll on those guys. There you go. So let's move into combat. Let me do Grim Gore first. So two wounds, the minus two rend. Two with minus two? Four. I'm looking for sixes here. Nope. So that's four damage total. Four damage total? Okay. And then his second almighty Ed Butt, hitting on a two, wounding on a four. That's one more wound, no rend. <laughs> Alright, just so I get a four up? No. And that is doing three damage. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Grimgore headbutted you and three died. File in there, boys. Get at it. Five, six, seven attacks. These are going to be threes to hit. Turn three, not much accomplished except for the fact that I'm still holding two objectives. I do still have models in the center objective, but the Vader's got more. So that is now a score of Dwarves two, Iron Jaws four. And now let's roll for initiative. Taylor gets a one, and I get a five, so Iron Jaws double turn. Hero phase, let's see if these brutes can get out of the mud. And they do! And what about the other war chanter? Yes, so both these guys can now move. His command ability, which will give people plus one to hit in the combat phase. The shaman. The shaman is going to cast Mystic Shield on Grimgore. We need a six up. That'll do it. Springboard so Ironhide has Mystic Shields. Let's do Rampaging Destroyers. Everybody has pushed up. These brutes got an exceptionally good roll, so they're most likely going to be able to charge this turn. And I've decided if I hold the one War Chanter here on the objective, I can rush his ranged unit with my two squads of brutes there. So let's start charging. We'll start with these brutes here. So that'll be the fun one. That's a seven inch charge and they make it no problem. Let's do those brutes 
over there, the first group, they get an eight inch charge. That's not gonna be enough. And the other brutes also get a six inch charge. That's not gonna be enough. So two failed charges over there. Both these war chanters gave these brutes plus one to hit. Just because I have two war chanters, why not? And then of course Grim Gores. So basically if I roll anything but a one, I hit. So let's go with the boss claw. That hits. Wounding on a three. So that's one wound with minus one written. Save. Save it. The boss smasher, wounding on a three. That's one wound with minus one, two rend. Six. Oh, almost. So that is doing two damage. Alright. Then we'll do the gore chopper. That's two hits. Three hits. Three hits. Uh, and one wound, minus one rend. Oh. Yay. Saved. Okay, let's do the other three. Okay, no ones. So, wounding on a three. So there's that many wounds with a minus one wound. Five. Let's go. No, we didn't go. Five, six, seven. Four's to wound. Uh, these are going against uh, Grim Gore. Nothing. 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 Let us do Grim Gore. Four attacks. Hitting on a two. Wounding on a two. Two more wounds, the minus two rend. Success. Oh. And that's four damage. That's the unit. And we'll pile in with Dwarf Lord. Well, raise health. Four attacks, threes to hit. Call hit. Threes to wound. Three wounds. They don't get that reroll. The grumblers have grumbled their last. Rend? Ren 2. Ren 2, so I need 6s. 1 6, so that's 6 damage, right? Yep. <laughs> Two brutes go away. This is the end of turn 4 Iron Jaws. Uh, he still has the center objective. I'll just do a battle shock on my brutes real quick. 3, they lost 2, their bravery is 6, so the brutes are fine. So that's 2 more points for. Iron Jaws, so now it's a total of six to two Iron Jaws, and it is the Dwarf's turn. Hero phase, we're going to go ahead and cast the Grudge, Ancestral Grudge on this unit. We're going to try to lay down some Dwarf Firepower, um, take as many with us as we can. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's kind of the death throes for the Dwarves, Just defiantly doing what little we can. We're going to move these guys forward. I'm gonna move the gyrocopter 12. Oh, yes, I'm not. I'm gonna run with the gyrocopter five inches, so that's 17. <laughs> Just enough to get over these guys. Drop the bomb. This is enough to yeah. move without with three inches, though, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. My other three. How far do they go? 17. Well, if it's base to base, then no. Uh, yeah, if it's it model to model, certainly not. Okay. Yeah, so I guess I don't drop the bomb. No bomb today, guys. We'll shoot him with the chatter gun instead. That'll be enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle some guys forward, and then we'll be on to the shooting phase. Into this unit, which is plus one to wound. So now we'll be hitting on threes and wounding on twos. So we're looking for threes to hit, twos on that purple dice. And we're looking for twos to wound. We got a grudge to sell. All wound. That's gonna be 10, 14 wounds. That Ren block. Really performing well, I really do like that unit. Okay, so saving on a five. A three save, how many? 14, so 11 wounds. So three brutes go away. And this guy has two wounds on him. So the, oh. unit, so the unit has four wounds left. Dangerous firepower there. And then the gyrocopter chatter gun. If we could hit and wound all four, and he fails all his armor saves, we can wipe out that unit. And what does that do for us? Absolutely nothing. 
Here we go. Well, I've, I've hit once. And I didn't manage to lose, so. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So that's going to be three hits. That's going to be two wounds. That's three wounds of peace. Uh, was there a rend on that? Uh, no. Oh, you two, rend two. Rend two. I'm sorry, none of them saved. Yeah. So. Even on twice the amount of dice required. <laughs> uh, so I'll let you keep wounds? the roll. Yeah. No, they're all dead. Three. Six, six, six. I only got two. Oh. Six, right, there's so one guy. The boost boss. The, the boss. He's still alive. Because that's actually the battalion big boss. He's important. The only thing I have in combat is, is that one group. So, let me see if I can't delete this general. I'm gonna do three wounds. Let's see. Hitting on a two. Wounding on a three. There's one wound and minus two rend. It's a six to save. Wait, minus one rend. Oh, that doesn't save. So that's two damage. Alright, so he's got one left. He had a phoenix stone. Um, for all of you who remembered, he was at two wounds. That's Two more wounds with a minus two range. Uh -huh. Well, almost. Oh. Sad day. Let's do battle shock. These brutes lost three guys. Five plus three is eight, minus two, so these guys both run away. And then the second unit of brutes. They lost all their units this turn, so four. Oh, they lost all four. Yep, so I need... Nope. This guy runs away. He killed a guy and then ran away from it. <laughs> and that's the end of Dwarf's turn four. That looks like I've got the one objective. Uh, it's getting late here, though. There's really no point in continuing the game except kicks and giggles, so I think we're going to call it here. Uh, major victory for Iron Jones. So, playing dwarves, it's always kind of an uphill battle. You kind of come in knowing that. And I feel like I did fairly well today. I don't think I made any huge mistakes. Um, it's just hard to get around, get objectives, uh, when you move four inches and you're penalized for running and charging. Um, that unit I really couldn't do anything about realistically. I guess I could have tried to like Hail Mary with the Thunders, but I would have never gotten down to get the objective. And it probably wouldn't have happened until turn 5 anyhow, so I didn't see much of a point. Um, I suppose in hindsight maybe trying to boost up that flank would have been something I should have done, but if you look at the board there's really not a lot left for me. So I think no matter how you would have, how you would have shook it out, I think it would have been it's, you know, quite the fight. I rolled pretty well, can't complain about that either, so it's just playing dwarves and matched play, and for some reason I really, really like it. Iron Jaws wrap up. That was a good game for me. It was looking close. At the first few turns, I was really worried, uh, especially with that artillery. He deleted that unit of 10 art boys without much trouble at all, and that really had me worried. But my brutes came in and kind of saved the day. I'm really glad I took that one unit of 10. The befuddled terrain rather befuddled me, but again, the brutes charged in with a Hail Mary and saved the day there. Well, they didn't save the objective, but they did some damage. So all in all, a good game. Um, I'm not sure that I made any mistakes either, but if you think there's something else that either of us should have done, leave a comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you in two weeks. Remember, remember the dead. We'll commemorate them later. On a scale of one to even, you can't.